good. All right. Hey, what's going on there, Warrior? Jeff Anderson here, Executive Director, Warlife.com and the Warrior Life Academy. And look, I, I can still remember the look on Sunstein's face. Now, we were brand spanking new privates in basic training, and this was our first week out in training, out in actual field exercises out in the woods. And we were up at zero dark 30 after our first day. We road marched out there, set up our hooches. Very first thing the next morning, Sunstein comes out of his hooch. And he's like frantic. I could see the look on his face. He was just, he was like pale. It was almost like he glowed in the dark. And I asked him what was going on. He's like, I can't find my rifle. I can't find my rifle. I'm like, what do you mean you can't find your rifle? It's your rifle. Can't find his rifle. All of a sudden, the entire camp, the drill sergeants are over there. Where's your rifle? I don't know where my rifle is, drill sergeant. We all got online, all looking all over the woods for his rifle. Suddenly, after about a half an hour of looking, drill sergeant comes up with his rifle. It wasn't lost. Sunstein didn't leave it somewhere. The drill sergeants, in all their infinite wisdom and in taking us little punks and forging us into men ready for the battlefield, taught us a very valuable lesson that day. The drill sergeants would come around at night and try and take your weapon from inside your hooch. This very first exercise was really to help us to expand our brain into thinking about security and the enemy and that the enemy is everywhere. The enemy can be anywhere. And so then our drill sergeant sat us down and he said, look, we're going to do this every single night. Sunstein, of course, had to be punished, not only from the push-ups that he had to do like throughout the day, but he also had to have his weapon dummy corded to his belt. Now, dummy cord, if anybody that's been in the military, you know, um, it's kind of like, you know, they call it a dummy because you're a damn dummy. And if you end up losing something, oftentimes your sergeant will make you take a piece of paracord, some 550 cord, and tie it off to the object that you keep losing and then tie it off to your belt. So you're not going to lose it. That could be canteens. It could be your bayonet. It could be your rifle. It could be another another item, right? So Sunstein had to have his, his M16 dummy corded to his belt for the entire, uh, for the ne entire next day. But the drill sergeants also taught us how to avoid having our weapons taken. How to detect the enemy coming into our camp or into our specific location, like where, wherever our hooch was, and how to avoid having our gear, our weapons, our ammunition stolen from us or potentially even having us killed. And I wanna share some tips that I learned from my drill sergeant with you right now with some improvised, and in some cases, right off the market, perimeter devices that you can use even in situations where you are out in the woods, away from nowhere, away from electricity, that you can detect somebody coming up and trying to steal your resources, your food, your weapons, your ammunition, or potentially to even harm you in, in a situation where it is every man for himself and you are evacuating to a certain area or you are having to stay in a more remote location for an extended period of time. Now, some of these improvised devices I've used in everyday life, and I'll share those with you as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first trick that I learned from my drill sergeant was number one, not to be found. Now, in the first night, we had to, like, they wanted to inspect how we set up our hooches and everything. But after that, they let us really go anywhere that we wanted to in the general location of where we were. I became very, very skilled at finding places that were well out of the way and were hidden within bushes and they were, they were remote enough. They were, they were far enough away from eyesight that I probably wasn't going to be the first hooch picked by one of the drill sergeants. There's probably something that was going to be easier. And there's another reason for that I'll share with you here first. But number one, you want to make sure that you are not out in the open or have anything that is going to help other people detect where you are in a remote location. So that might be if you have a tent. Um, I don't recommend tents. They're usually too big. They're too bulky. Oftentimes, they're not a color that blends in with your surroundings, so they can be detected by color. 
a lot of times they also have reflective material on them meant for you to be able to find your tent because some people in that do remote camping suddenly can't find where their tent is and you shine a flashlight out there and you're going to see the glint there of the reflector and you want to take that stuff off so if there are people out there that might reflect the the moonlight or even a flashlight if somebody has that. So you want to find locations that are going to take you out of the way so that you're not able to be physically detected by other people that are in the area. So stay remote. That was, that was the first thing that he, that he taught us. The second thing was what Sunstein had to do, which was to dummy cord your gear. So one of the things that you can do for detection purposes is if you, if somebody is trying to, let's say, get to a rifle that you have or your, I mean, I used to dummy cord my, my backpack. So it might be your bug out bag. It could be anything that you can tie off to. And all you need is some 550 cord and you tie it to the object that somebody might take and then tie the other end either around your wrist or around your leg. Something that is going to allow you to, like, it's going to start tugging on you and they're going to, I mean, they're not going to know that it's tied to you. So they're going to start, they're going to pull it and maybe even try to yank it and run, but it's tied off and it's, it's not going to go anywhere until you actually, uh, well, they, they might take their, uh, they might leave with their, with their arm hacked off, right? So even just dummy cording your gear is going to be very, very helpful for you. This will come in, in handy in a, in a few different, a uh, few different things here. Okay, so the other, the number three is that our, that my drill sergeant taught us is in where we hide to also either choose a, a, a location that is going to be noisy for somebody to be able to come up to you or to be able to artificially create, generate noisemakers in your area. So for example, if I'm inside of a set of bushes or shrubs and I'm able to set up my hooch in there, well, nobody's been able to get inside of there without rustling through the bushes to be able to get to me. And so when that happens, well, I can tell you that from this experience, we all became very light sleepers at that point or selective sleepers. I mean, I got to the point where I could hear, you know, I was, I was living, uh, when I was in, uh, I was in Louisiana, Fort Polk had my daughters with me. I could, we were near the, the, um, the range where there was artillery range and I could hear the rounds going off all night long and I could sleep right through it. But if one of my daughters in the next room stepped out of bed to go get a glass of water, I could hear her feet on the floor. Become very selective listener when you are in a heightened state of awareness, which you are going to likely be in a survival type scenario, especially if you realize that there are other people out there who do want what you have, the more prepared you are, the more likely you are to be targeted if people can notice that, right? So, so just having a location where it's noisy to be able to get to you is a, is a, is a big benefit for you. But you can also artificially create that. So what you can do is you can take gravel that is in the area or dry leaves and then spread it around where you're at. So that's what I would start doing is when we, I, this was during a time when it was like a fall winter. And so, would take dry leaves and just put it outside of the tent. Now I could hear somebody just cracking one leaf. It was going to wake me up. I was that paranoid. So you can do that same thing around your campsite, around your, just even around your hooch where you have dried leaves. You can get gravel from someplace, uh, shells, anything that's going to make noise, small twigs, like very, very thin ones. You can spread those around. So they're going to, when somebody steps on them, they're going to break and snap anything that you can cr use to create natural noise around you. And it doesn't even give off that it is a, a noise detector because it, to somebody that is trying to creep up on you, they're most likely not even thinking about that. They're geared on making sure that you're not going to wake up when you're sleeping or they're trying to find their best way in, but they're not typically thinking about or even be able to see the dried leaves or small twigs that you have around you. All right. Now, the next thing is to use, we didn't have this out in basic training, but any sort of a, a, a soda can. So I used this one time. I've used this in a, a few different uh, times. Sometimes when I was traveling overseas in more remote locations, whether I was in um, Honduras or uh, Mexico a lot, or even in the United States, I had a, a protective detail that I did for a very wealthy woman who had received some, um, some death threats. 
And it was an impromptu setup. We had to set up, I had to set up inside of her house, but it was just me in this gigantic house. This person had that was giving her death threats had keys, every other means to be able to get in there. So I essentially set up a central post around like where her bedroom was. So I made sure that it was it was secure around her bedroom. But then the room outside of that was where I would be. But throughout the house, I would take several soda cans, stack them up on top of one another. And then wherever there was a door, I would take some 550 cord tied off to the bottom can. And if anybody opened that door whatsoever, it was gonna knock all the cans down. It made a very loud noise and I was gonna be able to wake up. I could also listen to where those cans were being knocked down so that I knew where there was an intruder as well, as opposed to even a simple alarm system might go off, but you don't know where the intruder is. For me, I wanted to know where the intruder was. I've also used, like I said, I've used this also when I've gone traveling overseas, if I've been in Honduras, uh, Panama, if we were in locations where we needed to set up a, a small perimeter defense, or even if I was just in a, a rental house, I would set these up, even without paracord or anything, you can just set them up right on the inside of a door, especially sometimes it was in houses where I had my young son with me, who was very, very young, and it wasn't conducive, like where his location was, was in another part of the house. But I needed to be able to hear if somebody was opening up his door. I was deathly afraid of of uh, human trafficking and, and, and my son being kidnapped in the middle of the night. So I would take beer cans, soda cans, whatever it was, and set it up by doors so that I could hear if something uh, something happened in the middle of the night. Now I did, they did go off because my son would get up, maybe come to, I knew that he was headed toward us and to come into our bedroom to ask us, you know, if he could get a drink of water or whatever. So, but Soda cans are also a very good impromptu, improvised noise detector. Now there are also some off the market detectors that you can use. Now, one of them is, you can buy these even on Amazon, but they are, they are spring-loaded tripwire um, initiated alarm systems that use a a blank shotgun shell. So they're typically spring loaded. I mean, it doesn't take much to set off around. It has, uh, you know, all you need is a firing pin to hit that primer and you're, and the round's going to go off. And so very easily these noise detectors, you just slip in a, I wouldn't recommend using any sort of a, an actual, 12 gauge round with shot in it or slugs, but they make blank rounds that you can just buy online. And so you just insert those into the area where the round goes, like where the base of, of the shell goes. And then you just pull down on the spring loaded firing pin. And oftentimes what it is, is just a little shim that goes to hold the spring down. And that shim will have a tiny little hole in it that you can take trip wire and attach it to that and then attach it to, you know, you spread the wire across the, a path, a normal path that would somebody would take to get up to you and you put that into a tree. Now I have used like little eye bolts that you can screw into trees. I carry those with me to be able to run the trip wire through so you can cover actually a couple different, a few different areas where there might be likely paths for people to come in. And, uh, and that way, if they trip the trip wire, what happens is that the, the basically pulls out that shim and that spring loaded firing pin comes up, hits the, uh, the base of the shell, and then the shotgun shell goes off. Now, I have used this in real life. Now, when I was living in New Mexico, I was in a high, high gang populated, high crime area, and it was, I was in a remote location. So there was uh, a gang of, um, uh, El Serenos were, were in my area. I mean, it was, there were quite a few gangs that were in there, but they had kind of claimed my area. And so the way that they claim areas is by tagging. And I had a wall around my, around my house and they kept tagging my house. And the best way to get rid of them is to just paint over it like the next day and not leave the tags there and make it, make it, uh, so it doesn't make, make any sense for them to be able to tag it. But what I did first though, was I set up one of these shotgun shell trip wires in front of the wall that they were tagging nonstop. And you could see actually where they were spray painting 
their their tag and then all of a sudden you can see like the spray paint just like went shooting up it was no longer their tag and it ended right there they had tripped they had they had tripped the uh, the wire it had gone off and scared the hell out of them and they took off out of there now i reset the alarm with another blank shell and just to be able to get them again if they came back and they did come back and they took my trip wire with them. So they thought it was so cool that they decided, well, I want one of those as well. And they just, they took the whole thing from me. Lesson learned. I mean, they're not so stupid to come back and do it twice. But you can get these noisemakers online. They're used oftentimes for knowing that there are even like bears in your campsite or other predators that might come into a regular campsite. So you can have these, these different kinds of uh, detectors out there. Now, you don't have to spend money on these. I have actually even rigged up a version of the same exact thing using a shotgun shell and nothing but a, a mouse trap. And there's a diagram that I use inside of our Social Chaos Escape and Evasion Manual that shows how to make one of these. Uh, again, be very, very careful with these. Those blank shells can cause a lot of damage. Of course, you want to keep them away from children and everything. You want to be safe with them. But there is a diagram. You can create one of those even with a with a <clears throat> with a mouse trap. Even more kind of redneck than that, there are some other ways that you can create these noise devices. So one are these fireworks. You can get these at any, any little fireworks stand. And they're little string bombs. All they are, it looks like a, a mini firecracker. And it has two pieces of string that go on the outside. They're very long pieces of string because it's meant to, when you pull these two strings apart, the firecracker, if you will, in the middle is going to go off. So all you need to do is tie off some paracord or some dental floss. I've also used fishing line. You just tie it off to each end and then you anchor those two ends somewhere across a path that somebody might take to be able to get to you. When they, when they go against that wire, it is going to pull them apart naturally. And this is the weakest point right there is at that firecracker. And so that is going to sound off and let you know. Now, if you're sleep, if you're dead asleep, that one little firecracker might not do a hell of a lot for you. So it's always advisable to put another one in front of it. So if somebody's coming through, they might hit the second one at the same time. And so now you're getting like a double bang there and it's not loud enough that it's going to necessarily scare them away. They're, it's not going to, like they think it's going to be an actual round being shot at them, but it will give a couple there and they're going to realize that they've probably been detected. Somebody's going to hear that and likely they will take off from there. Now, there are some other really cool noise detectors, some that I keep with me, especially when I'm traveling. If I'm in a hotel or something, I will bring a doorstop alarm. Now, the doorstop acts as a lock itself. So in urban settings, this is very helpful. So even if you are in a bug out scenario and you're in urban surroundings and you are going to stay a night in an urban location, maybe it's a house that's been vacated, maybe it's been... Uh, a building, maybe it's no, no matter what it is. If it's got a door, you want to make sure that you secure that door in some way or have some sort of detector that's going to allow you to know when somebody has entered into your space. Now, these doorstop alarms act as a door stopper. So it's a wedge shape that you can just put in front of the door there. It has grippers on the bottom of it. So <clears throat> it will stop the door from actually opening. So it, it provides some element of security just from being able to not just de uh, detect somebody, but deter them and also delay them from getting through the door. The detection comes from the, the plate on top of it that acts as a trigger for the alarm. So when the door tries to go into the wedge, it knocks the top plate down and this will set off the, uh, the high decibel alarm to let you know that somebody is coming in. These work very well for travel. I use these in hotel rooms as another another form of detection and security when I'm at the hotel rooms. There are also also motion detectors that you can use. Some of these are all right off the market. They are they they have a little uh, in, like an infrared sensor in them and a lot of them will have strobes also. I like these. They're battery operated so you don't have to worry like if the grid goes down, your alarm system's down, it might have a battery backup. 
but that battery can go away. I like to have some sort of detection device in urban surroundings and within the house to let me know where somebody might be. So with these detectors, essentially it has a little IR device and a strobe light, and it does have a delay on it oftentimes. And so you'll see when you first turn it on that there's a red light that goes on. Now that's just to let you know that it's not armed yet. Typically there is about a 30 second delay on these devices. And after a while, it will go, that, that when that light goes off, it means that it's armed, usually about 30 seconds later. The seven second delay is so that you don't set it off instantly, either they're an instant alarm or a seven second alarm, or a seven second delay on the alarm. The seven second delay is so that you can go into the room, turn it off without setting off the alarm and letting other people know. Now, will these work out? There it is going off right there. Um, will these work in a more rural setting? They, they probably will, but it depends. I mean, a lot of things can set it off. So if it's windy outside, if the, if the bushes start moving, it might set it off, give you a false detection. I like these more for urban surroundings where I'm inside of a house or another building or a structure and they're going to give me the, uh, they're, there's not going to be any, the, anything that moves in that area is going to be something I don't want to be moving in that area. All right. Now, it's not that loud of an alarm usually for these because they are meant for indoors. It's about a 100 decibel alarm. So the last thing I'll share with you here, this is our 6 o'clock tactical personal alarm. This is one of the best self-defense tools that's out there because criminals don't want to be detected. They, that's why they, they hide in the shadows. That's why they choose when you're alone. They don't do it in public. They will oftentimes just try and either grab somebody, snatch somebody, or ambush somebody. And if you have the wherewithal, if you, even if you can't get to a weapon with a personal alarm that is connected to your everyday carry bag or to your belt or wherever you might have it, just pulling on that is going to set off a, this is a hundred, we have 130 decibel alarm, so it's louder than the indoor detection device that I have. And it also has a strobe on it. So what I like about this is that it has a lot of different applications. So yes, it does have a self-defense purpose there. So if you don't carry concealed or if you have uh, kids or a spouse, whatever, they should have one of these. Uh, we, we sell them. We actually, we actually don't have these on uh, like a sales page. We don't sell this typically as a device. We'll oftentimes use it with our everyday carry gear or with filming or we'll have it in um, like a bonus with our everyday carry bags and things like that. Um, but we can make this available. I can probably put this up. So if you go, because it makes a good stocking stuffer if it's Christmas time, right? So you can go to uh, warriorlife.com slash alarm, and we'll go ahead and put a link there for it. But what I like about this is also as a perimeter detection device, it works for an improvised detection as well. So what you can do is you just simply just anchor this to anything. Now, we've I've taken this in, out on trees and just with some duct tape, be able to put it on a tree. Again, with the uh, the clip that's on here, it can be clipped onto any sort of a like your your belt, uh, your shirt, any anything that you can. You have a loop on. You can you know, molly straps, anything. You can attach it to that. But all I do is I just take some dental floss, some really strong dental floss, or some Kevlar cards, some paracord, and just attach it to the other end here. Now, especially with those eye bolts, it's one of the reasons why I carry the eye bolts is because it's very easy to just screw that into a tree or some other anchor, a board somewhere in urban surroundings. You can use any sort of like a, a maybe it's a telephone pole, a tree, or it could be the house itself, the interior of the house. If you can, you can put these inside, you just tie that off there. And then another eye bolt on the other's end where the trigger is, where the, the basically the pull mechanism is, keeps this from getting being pulled through. So essentially when they hit the tripwire, it not only is it going to sound off the alarm, but it's also going to send the strobe. So you can have several of these located around your perimeter of your camp or inside a home. And then when it goes off, not only do you detect a, a, an intruder, but you also know where they're coming from as well, because the strobe is going to be going off and that's where you, it's going to grab your attention. So now when you wake up, you don't have to try to figure out where somebody is. You know exactly where they are. If they're in front of that also, it's typically going to silhouette them. So now you have, you can see who it is or have a better view because the light's going off. It is going to illuminate the area. So again, you're going to be able to detect, is it a, an intruder or is it somebody that, that you know? You always want to identify 
if it is a bad guy before you start whipping out your smoke wagon and start spraying the area, right? So these work very, very well for perimeter detection as well as self-defense. And I've even attached these to things like if I'm traveling, even at the airport, things like that, because you can carry these right through TSA. I'll attach it to my backpack, my everyday carry bag, and have it anchored off where it might be on, um, I've tied this off, or my, my bag, I've, I've had, uh, let's see, I've had it like a, the laptop, it has a, a fastener on there. You can attach it to pretty much anything that if somebody tries to grab your bag, because sometimes I'll have my bag behind me, but if somebody tries to grab it, it will be, maybe this will be on my belt loop. And then when they go to, when they goes to, they take it, it, it'll sound off the alarm. Now that's never happened, but it's just good for creative detection if somebody's going to grab your stuff, all right? Okay, so these are the improvised detection devices that you can use in even more remote locations on a bug out type of scenario or even a survive in place scenario. We're going to be adding a section of this for one of our upcoming books that we have as well. So what I'm looking for are some additional tips that you might have related to some alternative detection devices that can be used even in remote locations, like if you have a bug out camp somewhere. How can you stay undetected? How can you detect that somebody is in your camp, whether that is a human predator or whether it is an animal that's coming to take your Fruit Loops, right? So go ahead and please leave us a comment. If you go over to our blog at warriorlife.com slash podcast, you can find our episode there. Or you can, anywhere that you're watching this, if you're watching it being streamed on YouTube, on our channel at youtube.com slash warrior, or if you're on our Facebook page where we're live streaming, you can go ahead, wherever you are watching this or listening to this right now, you can just go on, go on, go on over there and please leave us a comment about some other ways that you know to use for improvised detection devices. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. And of course, if we use your tip, we will give you full credit for it. So please make sure that you do leave your name and with the comment as well. All right. And until then, this is Jeff Anderson saying prepare, train, 